In the midst of special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation, House Democrats are stepping up their own investigations into the president. Plus, the man charged with killing Gary Medlin during an attempted robbery in Knox County in January says he is innocent. We have more. And this could cause concerns for parents who often go to a popular fast food chain. You will never believe what one boy found in his Happy Meal. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is 6.30 on Tuesday, March the 5th. I'm Will Puckett. Thank you, as always, for tuning in to Mountain News this morning. Well, it's a chilly start. You're probably going to have to fire your car up a little bit earlier, but it's better than rain or snow, which we just seem we can't get away from the rain, and I wish we, could get away, we couldn't get away from the snow. Nonetheless, we'll leave out personal bias aside. Let's bring Brandon in this morning. He'll give you a breakdown of what to expect on this Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And Brandon, all people need to know is they're going to need some hot cocoa, some warm warm tea or some warm coffee this morning because it's going to take a little extra to get going. Exactly, because it is cold outside, very cold. Let's take a look at the camera network. We start in Whitesburg this morning, and you can see a few clouds there in the sky, but for the most part, dry and chilly. Look at that. 19 here, Hazard, Middlesboro, and Jacksboro. That is the warmest spots in the region. A lot of folks a little colder than that, especially out toward I-75 and Lake Cumberland. It's 12 and 14, respectively. 16 in Pikeville. When you factor in the wind, it feels like single digits in a lot of areas and below zero out near Monticello. So your 12-hour planner, lots of sunshine, but again, we're going to see those chilly conditions as we head through the rest of your day. And then as you turn the heating forecast up for the next little bit, you'll definitely need that heat cranked up for the next couple of days and we start to get a little break in the action as we head toward the end of the week. Will? Brandon's bringing the heat with those new graphics. Thank you. Well, as special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation seems close to wrapping up, House Democrats are stepping up their own investigations into President Trump. Dozens of associates of the president have two weeks to turn over documents related to a variety of subjects. President Trump says he is not worried about the House Democrats sweeping new probe. I cooperate all the time with everybody. And you know the beautiful thing? No collusion. It's all a hoax. Yesterday, three other House Democratic chairmen sent letters to the White House and State Department asking for documents related to the president's conversations with Russian President Vladimir Putin. The 81 recipients have two weeks to produce the documents to the House Judiciary Committee. Otherwise, they will likely face a subpoena. Well, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul is again talking about his vote against the president's national emergency. Senator Paul is pushing for Congress to rethink this declaration. Here's another part of his news conference in Washington, D.C. Me, it isn't even about immigration. It isn't about a Republican or a Democrat president. It's about Congress versus the president and where the power should be distributed. Now, Senator Mitch McConnell of Kentucky is expecting the vote to pass, but he believes the president will veto it. Now, again, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said at a news conference in Louisville yesterday that it was clear that the resolution of disapproval over President Trump's national emergency declaration over the border wall has enough support to pass the GOP-led chamber. I was one of those uh, hoping the president would not take the national emergency route. <clears throat> Uh, once you decide to do that, I said I would support it, but I was hoping he wouldn't take that particular path. I think what, uh, what is clear in the Senate is, is there will be enough votes uh, to pass the resolution of disapproval, which will then be vetoed by the president, and then in all likelihood the veto will be upheld in the House. Now, the Supreme Court is steering clear of a religious liberty case in New Jersey. Yesterday, the high court decided not to get involved in a case that ruled against using public money to fix up churches. But the decision did not come without comment. Justice Brett Kavanaugh, joined by Justices Samuel Alito and Neil Gorsuch, said they agreed that the court should not take up this particular case because some of the facts were in dispute. But they are troubled by a lower court opinion that went against the churches. Well, the United States has officially closed its consulate in Jerusalem, downgrading the status of its main diplomatic mission to the Palestinians by folding it into the U.S. Embassy to Israel. The announcement came from the State Department yesterday. For decades, the consulate functioned as the de facto embassy to the Palestinians. Now that outreach will be handled by a Palestinian affairs unit under the command of the embassy.
Meanwhile, First Lady Melania Trump is taking her Be Best initiative on the road. In her first solo U.S. overnight trip in an official capacity, the White House says each stop of the three-state tour is designed to highlight a key component of the First Lady's campaign. Yesterday, the First Lady visited an elementary school in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The White House said Mrs. Trump stopped the here because the school incorporates character education into its curriculum. Together, I believe we should strive to provide kids with the tools they need to cultivate their social and emotional health. The First Lady has now the First Lady's to tour wraps up tomorrow with a stop in Las Vegas, where she will hold a town hall on opioid addiction. Well, a new environmental report says waste ash from coal fired power plants in the U.S. has contaminated groundwater in 39 of 50 states. The contaminants include arsenic, lithium and mercury. The report by the Environmental Integrity Protection and Earth Justice is based on groundwater monitoring data. The data was reported to the Environmental Protection Agency from more than 4,600 wells. The landfills and ponds used to store coal ash are often unlined, letting toxins leach into groundwater. The study author said, quote, virtually all coal plants are poisoning our water. An EPA spokesman says the agency is reviewing the report and can't comment on it just yet. Well, remembering a Perry County murder victim, Danny Mullins was shot multiple times last week. His visitation was Sunday night and the funeral was yesterday at the County Line Community Church. Family members shared memories of Mullins and told WYMT's Macy Marie he was someone they could always count on. Described as someone you could always rely on and who put family first. If you called Danny and you needed him, he would be there no matter what. Monday, loved ones attended the funeral for Danny Mullins who was shot and killed in Perry County on Wednesday. Family members like his niece, Carlina Campbell, say there were many things he was passionate about. He loved basketball, he loved cornhole, and, the, and most of all, he loved his daughter Lexi. He was, she was his pride and joy. And the most important thing to him? Most of all, family. He was a family man. With the person they could always rely on now gone, they asked the community for strength please continue to pray for us through this hard time because we need all that we can get. Loved ones say there are many amazing things they could say about Danny. You couldn't say a bad word about him. For now, reflecting on just some of those good traits. Loving, honest. They already miss. Respectful. In Perry County, Macy Marie, WYMT Mountain News. Now, family members say hundreds attended the visitation and funeral. Mullins was just 42 years old. Now, the man accused of shooting Danny Mullins, James McIntosh, was in court for an arraignment yesterday. He entered a not guilty plea. McIntosh will be back in court at 1 on Friday for a preliminary hearing. A request to lower McIntosh's bond was also denied during his court appearance yesterday. Well, he says he is innocent. Philip Lewis, the man charged with killing Gary Medlin during an attempted robbery in Knox County in January, talked to us from the Knox County Detention Center. He was arrested last month, month in Flint, Michigan after a three week long manhunt. Meanwhile, Medlin's family says they are happy that Lewis is now behind bars in the Commonwealth. WYMT's Hannah Reynolds has more. For the family of Gary Medlin, they feel the wheels of justice are starting to turn. We are actually proceeding to do what needs to be done as far as getting justice for my son. And now Philip Lee Lewis, the man charged in the shooting of Gary Medlin at the A&B Quick Stop in January, is behind bars, claiming he's been framed. I don't even know where I'm at. I don't even know nothing about Knoxville, Kentucky. I ain't never been here. As for the day of the murder, Lewis says he has a few different alibis. I was at home with my baby mama, sleep. I just had a long day of studio session with my cousin and them, whatever, woo the woo. We was kicking and chilling, rapping and smoking or whatever. I made it home about 11 o'clock. My uncle opened the door for me. Lewis even offered an apology to the Medlin family. I'm sorry for y'all loss or whatever. I rest in peace to Gary. I hope y'all get justice. But says police have the wrong man. I am not no killer. That is not me. I did not kill that man. State police and the Medlin family disagree. It wasn't God or anybody else. It was this evil monster, Philip Lewis. In Knox County, Hannah Reynolds, WYMT Mountain News. 
Now, Lewis is charged with murder and robbery. Before his interview with us in jail, Lewis appeared in U.S. District Court in London, where federal charges against him were dismissed in light of the new charges. Well, a happy meal with an unhappy surprise. An Ohio family was shocked after ordering their son a McDonald's Happy Meal. And instead of the toy, they say their four-year-old son found a razor blade. Police do not believe anyone put the sharp tool in the Happy Meal on purpose. But Father Scott Diamond is hoping some changes will be made at the local McDonald's to make sure this does not happen again. Well, construction of the Visitor Center building at the Appalachian Wildlife Center in Bell County is underway. It is expected to take up to 20 months to complete. The Visitor Center will include two museums, a restaurant and gift shop. Once finished, the Wildlife Center is expected to draw 850,000 visitors a year and create more than 2,900 new jobs. We hope to have more from the site of the project later today. Well, it is now 640. Let's toss it over to Brandon for a look at your weather. Well, the forecast this morning again starting to be kind of on the uh, sunny side as we head deeper into the morning hours. We're going to continue to see again the possibility for lots of sunshine. Today. A few clouds this morning. Temperatures there in the teens across the board and cold to start close to the single digits up near Moorhead. We go to the feels like temperature when you factor in the wind and it feels like single digits in a lot of locations this morning and below zero out near Monticello. So bundle up for sure. Anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees colder than it was this time yesterday morning. So as we go through the app forecast for today, make sure you download the WIMT weather app. You see sunshine across the board, but temperatures only get up into the 30s as we go deeper into the day and then start to drop heading into the evening hours. Will? All righty, Brendan. Thank you. Well, we will have stories that are trending on WIMT.com next. As always, thank you so much for joining us right here on Mountain News this morning. The United States Air Force Air Demonstration Squadron, the Thunderbirds, practiced their aerial formation yesterday in preparation for the Hollywood premiere of Captain Marvel. And a hippopotamus gave birth to a calf at a zoo in India last week, and both the calf and the mother appear to be doing just fine.